Mandy, you and I have talked about this in multiple conversations you and I have about the passion that we share for our national student community and obviously the challenges that they face. That being said, as an international student myself that was here 20 something years ago and somebody who deals with the challenges of international students every day, I wanna say thank you, first of all, for doing this and thank you for your involvement in the national student community and the passion that you bring as someone who has been the other side of the table. And that's really, I think, refreshing and it's heartwarming to a lot of international students. So thank you for that. And that being said, if you want to give our audience a little bit of an introduction about yourself, what you've done, your impressive, obviously, background as a visa officer would be super helpful. Yes, thanks so much for having me, Ashkan. And I, you know, I'm so excited to be working with you and working with your international students and everybody working with One Key Visa. I think, you know, I was a visa officer and a consul um, working for the State Department for about seven years. That's actually a lot longer than most people are visa officers. And one of the things that I noticed, you know, interviewing international students day in and day out is that. Oftentimes, students are denied visas not because they don't qualify, but because they're just not able to, you know, communicate effectively with the visa officer in just a few minutes' time. Now, a visa officer is generally expected to interview about one person every three minutes. So, at a three-minute interview, that is just not a whole lot of time for someone to explain, you know, their passions, their motivations about the U.S. And what I saw from most international students is that they tended to be very, very passive during the progress, you know, so they're talking about, you know, they're like, oh, you know, why are you going to the United States? And they'll just say to study. And that's, you know, kind of a wasted opportunity to explain to the visa officer who they really are. And that's one of the reasons why I do what I do. I really care about international students. I think there is so much potential there to help make the U.S. a better place to do, you know, the kind of research that people are doing. We really want the best and brightest students in the United States. And it's a shame if it's a visa interview, a three minute visa interview that is keeping international students from being able to come here and succeed. That's great. And, and that's absolutely correct. It gets frustrating, I think, to a lot of international students who go through the process because the amount of time, energy, resources and efforts that they put into this. And then they realize that that interview time, maybe it's about three, five minutes, as you said. And yeah. usually the feedback is that nobody even talked to me. The visa officer didn't even mention that. They asked me like one question and that was it. They didn't even look at my documents. Right. And so yes. that makes sense. And that's a great insight that you gave that how much time that they really these officers can actually give to our international students because of the volume of the work that they have and i'm sure in the last few years probably you would agree with me that it has increased because of all the backlogs because of all the issues the delays that the COVID has um, caused yeah. and a lot of these delays over across any really uh, u.s consulate Absolutely. And I'll say, you know, I say three minutes per interview, but in truth, it actually can be a lot shorter. I just remember working with so many of my consular colleagues. And when you develop that sixth sense as a visa officer, you're always looking for those quick approvals and quick denials. And so sometimes people will get denied after being just asked one or two questions. And that's like a 30 second interview. So I don't want people out there to think like, oh, you're definitely getting three minutes. Everything starts from the minute that you're walking up to the visa window, you know, how you present yourself and the visa officer is already sort of reading your face, reading your DS-160 application, understanding your background. And sometimes because they would like to be as efficient as possible, they have a hundred other people to interview after you. That's why they don't look at documents. That's why they just want to get this over with as quickly as possible. I know it doesn't seem fair, but unfortunately that's just how it is. And in the last few years, we've seen a lot happen, um, you know, from the pandemic and visa appointments completely shutting down and nothing being available, nobody traveling to now there's huge backlogs as things are getting started back up. And what we've seen is that, you know, there's a lot of newer visa officers that are on the line that don't have as much experience as some of the officers that have worked before, which means that it's even more important for international students to be prepared just the right way so that they can be a 30 second approval instead of a denial. That's awesome. That's great feedback. Thank you for that. So I think today we're talking about a couple of different things and just so that everybody can understand when, and we always talk about this, but usually generally visas in the United States, you have non-immigrant visas and immigrant. So non-immigrant, just like student visas, your intent has to be in a way that you say that I'm going to return back to my country, right? Mm -hmm. And that's super important for a lot of international students to understand that maybe basic but fundamental fact. 
That being said, as you interviewed a lot of international students when you were a visa officer, what was most frustrating for you as someone walked up to the window mm-hmm. and then what did you face? Like what was frustrating for you? Yeah, I think what was really frustrating for me was just people not being prepared for the interview. And, you know, as a visa officer, we ask questions all day long. You know, why are you going to the United States? Which school are you going to? What is your major? How are you going to have funding for your program? You know, what do your parents do? Those are a lot of questions and a lot of times it was frustrating because getting answers out of international students was like pulling teeth. You know, they'll give you just one word answers. Oh, I'm going to study. Which school are you going to? University. Okay, well, which university? And so I think, you know, for visa officers, they really want to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible and make that decision. And most of them actually want to make a decision in your favor, but you have to give them the information to help them do that. And that's really what preparing with me will do for you. So, um, you know, something to make the job of the visa officer a little bit easier so that they're like, oh gosh, like there's nothing else I have to do. No more questions I have to ask. I can just go ahead and approve this visa. So that was one frustration. And I think, you know, part of it is also cultural. People don't realize that when you have 30 seconds to three minutes in front of a visa officer, you really kind of have to make a little pitch about yourself. You know, why are you someone who is qualified to go to the U.S.? The, you know, it's actually your job to prove that to the visa officer. It's not the job of the visa officer to figure out, to get to the bottom of your situation, which is why so few of them do that, right? So really... I think for international students, you know, it would be great if they understood the process a little bit more so that they can take full responsibility for succeeding at the interview. And so, you know, this is this is a lot to take in. Culturally, most people are not used to like bragging about themselves or saying, hey, I got a scholarship to the school. But that is exactly what you have to do at the visa interview. You have to sort of share the highlights, the strongest points in your visa application to the officer in a very short amount of time. And it really takes some practice. I mean, how could you know if you're doing a good job, if you've never done this before and nobody's ever given you feedback who actually knows what the visa interview is like. And so hopefully this is something that that I can help you with and you know make it for you to make it easy for the visa officer to approve your visa. That's great, absolutely. And you touched on a great point because a lot of times that we talk to international students, we tell them, you know, visa officers are not mean people. <laughs> they're not bad people and they don't have the, you know, the bad intentions or they're not against you to start with, right? This is the, their job, right? So what you said, yeah. you're right, to make it easier for them to get to that point and that preparation. So I would probably, based on your feedback, I would say, for your conversation, I would say lack of preparation is probably one of the me- most frustrating things for a visa officer. Yes, yes, absolutely. Lack of, lack of preparation. Preparation, yeah, for sure. Makes sense. What about things like inaccuracy in their visa application forms? Does that make a big difference? It does, because one of the things that a visa officer does during the interview is to search for discrepancies between your DS-160 application form, perhaps your previous applications and what you're telling them now. And so sometimes when you have a discrepancy, you know, maybe something is different in how you're talking about it versus what's on your application and you can explain it away, but you might not have the time to do that. So it's really important to make sure that everything is consistent and honest in what you're saying and what's on your application because a visa officer will check. And that's because this entire exercise, this three minute interview is really just It's almost just like an interview based on trust. They want to see if they can trust you. And if they find that you've lied about something on your application or lied about something in person, then they basically disregard everything else that you're saying because they're like, well, if you lied about this, how do I know that you're not lying about everything else? So it's so important to be truthful and honest, and you can do it in a way that, you know, is positive for your situation if you know how to do it the right way. That makes sense. That makes actually a lot of sense. And so it supports what a lot of students actually say when they go to an embassy because as you said they have the visa officers have a little bit of a short amount of time to make that decision so then if you or if let's say as a visa officer you're looking at you know the s160 and then while you ask a question that's different or there's discrepancies then not having a lot of time that automatically sets the tone for that rejection probably yes that's exactly right and if you constantly are like oh but let me explain and you know i I think there was an inside joke with these officers that, you know, it was always like, 
well, officer, it's like this, you know, like they want to like explain why there's a discrepancy. And like, we used to hate that phrase. So yeah, so important to be consistent, to be honest. And I think honesty is always the best policy because, you know, first of all, it's important. It's, you know, the, the U S Americans take honesty, you know, very, very importantly. It's like one of like their biggest principles behind the visa interview. But the second thing is if you're being honest, then you don't have to, you know, think about a story to come up with. Or, you know, when you get nervous at the interview to think about, oh, what did I say I wanted to talk about with this? You can just be honest and defer to what is truly happening with your situation and that'll make it easier. And the visa officer can tell. I think, you know, there is no formula to a successful interview. I think a lot of international students are like, oh, okay, like if I just pitch myself and if I just say, hey, I'm absolutely eligible for the visa, well, sometimes you could be seen as trying too hard. So what a visa officer is doing is not just listening to your responses and looking at your application. They're also looking at your overall presentation. You know, are you like, I promise after my, you know, studies, I'm coming back to my home country and you seem like you're maybe just a little bit desperate, even though you're saying one thing, your um, facial expressions and how you're behaving may be saying something else and that could really hurt you. So you want everything across the board to be consistent. You know, how you're acting, how you're presenting, how you're talking, your application, everything needs to be consistent. That makes a lot of sense, which speaks to that entire, obviously being prepared for that visa interview, because we always say that if it was so easy that you would go in front of the visa officer, you say, I promise you I will return back to my country, well then everybody would get a visa, right? So yes. it's probably the, you know, visa officers as you have that experience, you would look for certain things in every single answer that you would hear back from the student. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. That's great. That's awesome, Andy. Well, thank you so much. Obviously, this is great. And I hope th this is obviously our first episode. I hope that we can continue doing these because I know how helpful truly these are. And in this very short conversation, you said so many great points that international students, when they go to visa interview, can take actually and take that, take your experience, take your feedback and then just work on themselves. And I found it actually really helpful. There's a lot of things that you said, like I said, it's, it's been like maybe 10 minutes, but it was definitely great. There was a lot of small details. And so I know this is really helpful for a lot of international students. So I hope that we do, we get to do so many of these episodes to help the yeah. international students truly appreciate your time. And I, if there's anything else that you want to add. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. I hope to have more of these sessions for international students who are watching because, you know, I know how hard it is and I know how hard it is to feel like you're not being seen or understood at the visa interview. And now there's something you can actually do about that. You know, you can work with somebody who's actually had that experience to let you know, you know, oh, this is, oh, this is how you're coming across. You know, what can you do better? How can you communicate better with the visa officer? And my hope is that, you know, we can go, get more international students here in the U.S. because we really need your brilliant minds to help make things better in this country. And I look forward to working with all of you. That's great. Thank you so much, Randy. Appreciate it. Very welcome. Looking forward to seeing you again.